Hey, happy Easter, everyone. Hope you're not making your parents too mad, bugging them all the time. Uh, to start this week off, we're going to do it like we did last week. We're going to start off with a few questions. First question for you, Ron, is if uh, you would have to shave your beard and head all the time unless you ate a worm every single day, would you do it? Well, I mean, that is actually a good question, but I would totally, uh, I would eat worms. I would learn how to make them tasty, too. I'd be coming up with recipes. I'd be using them in place of pasta. Uh, I'd be eating the worms. Okay, Justin. Same question back at you. Beard and hair versus worm. If it was just the beard, I would shave it. But I would not look good with a bald head. So I would also have to eat the worms. But yeah, I'm with you on that. You make some pretty tasty recipes with that. Hey, uh, you guys probably can't tell just by the microphone behind me. But some of you guys might recognize, I'm back in the blue room. Figured I was passing by the church, and uh, they let me, uh, you know, st stop by and do a little video for you guys. Um, I just had to, you know, make sure I didn't bring any anybody with me, and that I, you know, cleaned everything up when I was done. All right, guys, it's really weird uh, talking in front of an empty blue room, but you know, I'll do my best. So, uh, today is Easter, and uh, as you know, you guys probably know, Easter talks about Jesus, you know, resurrecting, coming back from the dead. But a big part of it, you know, he resurrected, you know, from the dead. So, him, him dying is, you know, a really big part that I feel like, you know, on Easter it gets really overshadowed. So, Ron's going to talk more about, you know, the resurrection half of it, but I'm going to talk about specifically Jesus' death. So here's a kind of thousand foot view on Jesus' death. So what Ron talked about last week we kind of left off was where, you know, Judas betrayed him and uh, then he was like in the garden praying. And then when uh, when Judas came, he pointed out, pointed out to the guards who, uh, or which one of them was Jesus. And then the guards, the guards came to arrest him and, um, as Ryan and I said a few times before, of, uh, you know, our boy Peter goes in this thing of rage and cuts the, cuts the guy's ear off. And uh, Jesus, being, you know, the, the cool guy that he is, just, you know, picks it up, brushes it off, and then, you know, puts it back on him. And like I said uh, before, I'd probably put it on upside down or something because, you know, he, he is arresting me. So, you know, got to give him a little something. Um... So then fast forwarding, you know, he's arrested. They take him, you know, to the, to the city. And uh, the basically like, kind of like the governor, uh, Pontius Pilate was there. And he actually uh, didn't really want to cru get Jesus crucified because he felt that Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Um, but and he was trying to convince the people, you know, what did he do? What did he do? And the people would just say something like, Oh, uh, if he didn't do anything wrong, why would we bring him to you? So he was, it was just a battle he wasn't winning. So there was another criminal there named Barabbas. And he's like, would you rather me release Jesus, who really didn't do anything wrong, or Barabbas, who's done many things wrong? And everyone's like, you know, Barabbas, you know, give us Barabbas. We'd rather have him. So he said, all right. He said, but I'm going to wash my hands clean of this because I, want, I don't want, you know, his blood on my hands. And then, so, then Jesus goes out on it to be crucified. All right, so I'm not going to get too into, uh, you know, the, the brutal part of Jesus' death. But just know that the, the guards, before he even went to go get crucified, was they, they were whipping him. They uh, put a, uh, a crown of thorns on his head. So he had, you know, thorns poking in on the top of his head. And uh, he just got the crap beat out of him. And uh, so then after, you know, he could barely move anymore. And he was just really, really bloody. And then he had to go carry his cross. And they didn't really do that all that often. Because um, that was like, you know, the worst punishment. Like they were giving Jesus like the worst punishment they possibly could. And then he had to go walk. I'm not sure how far it was he had to walk with the cross, but he had to walk with it up on a hill where he was with uh, two other people. 
which uh, one of the guys was, you know, ridiculing him, saying, oh, you know, you're the king of the Jews. And uh, the other guy, uh, you know, kind of believed that he was, you know, who he said he was. And then, you know, Jesus said, you know, you're, you're, well, you know, when you die, I'll, I'll see you in heaven. And um, so when, when Jesus was up there, uh, usually it takes quite a long time, you know, to, for the whole process. But he was just so beat up, it didn't take very long. And uh, he was up on the cross, you know, he looked up, he looked up, he looked up to the heavens and, you know, he cried out to God, you know, it is finished. And uh, part I forgot to bring up, which uh, part that always stuck out to me when I was younger, hearing it in church, was it was only like, you know, two, three o'clock in the afternoon when this all happened. So it, you know, it's two, three o'clock, it's, it's sunny out usually, or, you know, it's the middle of the day. But, you know, right after, right after Jesus died, uh, it was the darkness went over the whole land and the curtain in the temple was torn down the middle. And I, I don't know what you guys would do, but, you know, if all of a sudden I look and it's two, three o'clock outside and it's all of a sudden just pitch black, it was sunny a few minutes ago, I think, you know, I wouldn't know what to think. So when darkness went over the whole land, and there's there's also a pretty big earthquake that happened too, it it says that you know one of the a couple of the guards said uh, surely he was the son of God. So there's probably a couple of people like you know oh crap you know we just we just killed the son of God. And uh, so right after they you know right after uh, Jesus died on the cross, they took him. It was. Uh, Joseph, who was a, a friend of Jesus's, said, you know, he would take him to his new tomb. And a part, another part I forgot to mention was the reason why this whole thing was rushed was because it was getting uh, close to Passover. All right, so uh, before I pass it off to Ron, um, I just want you guys to really remember that, you know, like I said, I didn't go too much in, in depth with it. And I'd be more than happy to talk with you guys about it if you ever, you know, just have your parent reach out to me and I'd you know, gladly go more in depth with, with you about it. Um, but just remember, you know, Jesus went through all of that for us so he could be with us in heaven. Um, he didn't have to. He didn't have to go through all of that, you know, but he did because he just loves us so much. And there's no there's no type of love that's, that's greater than that. So, you know, without further ado, Ron, take it away. Thanks, Justin. Um, how's everybody doing? Happy Easter. I uh, wanted to touch base with you guys and kind of get into um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is kind of a big deal. So um, I want to kind of get into that. I want to actually read it straight from the Bible, if that's okay with you guys. If not, well, you can't really stop me. So eh. uh, I'm going to start in Mark uh, 16, and then I figure we talk about it a little bit. Uh, so any questions, by all means, just reach out to me later. So, uh, chapter 16, verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, uh, and Salome brought spices so that they might go anoint or go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after the sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. And he said, don't be alarmed. Uh, he said, you are looking for Jesus, of Naz Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter... He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So uh, something kind of interesting about this that I've always thought was kind of neat is um, that the first people that he appeared to uh, were the women that came to actually prepare his body, uh, which I thought that was always very peculiar. But there's something kind of cool here. That There's something I would want you to make sure that, that we're talking about when we look at this. I'm not going to really go too much further into the verses, but there's something to think about here. One 
is Jesus just proved that he can beat death. Um, that's huge. I mean, that is one of the biggest things that we, I think, take for granted. Uh, it, that we don't have to be afraid of because the person that we're following, uh, the God that we give our entire lives to has proven that death is in his hand. He can do whatever he wants to with it. Uh, that excites me. That makes me very, very happy. And I want it to make you guys happy. I want you guys to think about that stuff um, because it shows his power overall. Um, and we should be so grateful on Easter that he did rise from the dead and show that he could completely, that he had nothing to be afraid of, uh, that we have nothing to be afraid of. And when we look at the things that God does for us and the things that God has given us, uh, we get to see his power. Uh, and it's a righteous power. He did that out of love for us. That's all that really boils down to it. And he didn't have to spend time with us. He didn't have to come here and die for us. Uh, but he chose to because he loved us enough. So think about that when we're going through this next week and as we're going through this next year. Think about the sacrifice. Think about the sacrifice that Jesus was able to give us. And so many times we see movies that touch us and that, that make us uh, think about things where people give their lives for their friends. Jesus did absolutely nothing wrong his entire life. And then he paid the price by dying on a cross, a painful, horrible death. And then he got back up. And I've always loved the story about this. I've always thought about that. If you were Mary, uh, and or one of the guards that was set up to guard a tomb, which I thought was funny because there were guards set up for his tomb. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody dies, eh, most of the time they don't put a guard on their tomb to make sure that they're not going to get up and walk out. So, um, pretty interesting. But there was a lot of shady stuff that went around it and a lot of stuff that happened behind closed doors that shouldn't have. There's a lot of things that kind of really uh, and had to by prophecy uh, that the Bible said were going to happen way before this even happened that were shady. So uh, don't be shady either, uh, like Judas. That was not cool. So later on, Jesus comes back and he appears to all his disciples. And every version that you read says something a little bit different, whether it's Matthew or Mark or Luke or John, they're always worded a little bit differently. But there's one thing that I always thought was really cool because God gave, or Jesus actually gave the disciples one job after he was done, after he came back. Uh, he said, please, he said, here's what I'm telling you to do. Go into all nations and make disciples. Go spread the word, spread what you have seen. And that's what they did. So, without further ado, got a couple more things we want to go over with you. But uh, I wanted to close this one out with a quick prayer. Um, I love you guys. Miss you guys. Can't wait till uh, we can do this in class again. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for everything you've given us. Thank you for stomping death uh, and Satan and showing the world, the power that you have over everything. We love you. Uh, we ask that your will be done in our lives. Please forgive us for our sins when we screw things up, Lord. Uh, and we ask that all of those things that we do, whether they be good or bad, that they all be turned around for your glory. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you guys have a really great Easter. Hope you guys really stay safe out there. Um, and you guys just really uh, think about what Ron and I said today. And I hope, you know, sometime soon maybe we can do a live video or something like that. But, uh, again, hope you guys stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. So, Ron, uh, Stephen over here really misses uh, Chuck, and he's wondering how he's been doing lately. Hold on, Justin. I will see if I can find him for you. What's going on, Stephen? It's good to see you, buddy. Hang on. Chuck's got to wave. Hey, buddy.